Do you want to learn how to stop chasing leads so you don't have to spend a bunch of time away from your family, friends, and loved ones? Today's the day that you'll find out how. Andrew Gadosh is going to tell us today how to become the neighborhood mayor so you can spend more time with the people you want to. This is Honey Badger Nation. Where real estate agents from around the globe come together to grow, collaborate, and expand their business. Where we take our individual fires and put them together and make one big fire. This is the Honey Badger Nation. Good morning, everybody. I hope your Friday's off to a good start. Uh, I'm excited to be here with Andrew Gatos today. We're going to talk about how to become the neighborhood mayor. It should be quite a, a fun conversation and uh, really a way to jumpstart your year. So, uh, Andrew, you know, with that, you know, I know a little bit about you, but people on here might not. So, Tell us about you, who you are, where you're at, and what you're doing with your life. Yeah, Chase. Hey, man, we are really, really excited to be on the show today. And, um, you know, basically, we, I've, I've been selling real estate. Actually, one of my clients asked me last night, how long you've been in this? And I didn't really, <laughs> I hadn't done the numbers in a while, but it's been over 25 years. And, um, yeah, so we're located in Dayton, Ohio, and we sell from Cincinnati all the way to Indiana. We've got a pretty big footprint. Uh, so, yeah, anybody looking to kind of have clients moving uh, to the Dayton, Ohio, Cincinnati area, you know, we got you covered. But, um, yeah, we're a traditional real estate team. We have uh, about 15 of us that are on a team and um, have a few offices in the area and really excited about um, continuing to grow as we move forward. Nice. So 25 years, man, that's, uh, I mean, lots of experience there, wisdom, so to speak. How did you get started and what was it about real estate that, that uh, attracted you? Yeah, so uh, so I got started when I was in uh, just a freshman or sophomore in college, and um, I had a landscaping lawn mowing business in the neighborhood as I was a kid, saving for for college. You know, back in the day, you, you know, you, you could actually afford to pay for college, and um, and then I was fortunate to get a full ride to play basketball at the University of Dayton. So I'm a I'm a flyer, and with that, I had you know quite a bit of money that I I was able to leverage, and um, instead of paying for school with it, I started buying rental properties. And that kind of backdoored into, hey, listen, I should probably get my license. And um, that's exactly what we did. We got I got my license and then started uh, kind of went back to school, picked up a marketing finance degree. And, you know, I was I was like a full time job plan at that D1 level. So I didn't have a lot of time to sell, but I was around it. So I kind of understood how it was working and um, then uh, got out of school, went back to my hometown uh, in Richmond, Indiana, and um, started working for a local brokerage there. And within about six months, ended up buying a Remax franchise and had that for 10 years and then uh, sold it to a Realogy brand and then kind of spent on and on from there. So it's been been pretty exciting. We've, we've expanded markets um, and kind of tested the waters. And I'm happy to be on your show because I, I love helping people. You know, we talk about like Jay Kender and I are really good friends. We were 30 under 30s. And you know, one of the common themes that we have is we'd like to collapse time for people, you know, let us, you know, learn by our maneuvers in the past. They weren't mistakes. They were, you know, kind of educational uh, opportunities is what we call them. I know and that uh, feeling. You know, and if we can help you guys out, hey, that's great. Yeah, I love it. So, yeah, I had Jay on the show and he was, I mean, talk about a wealth of knowledge. Uh, he was a lot of fun to have on. Um, so huh, compressing time. I love that because, you know, I, I joke that I'm kind of lazy, but really I'm just looking for the most efficient way to get things done so I don't have to spend a bunch of time on it. Um, and today specifically, we're kind of talking about, you know, the neighborhood mayor aspect of it. So I'm sure with your experience in real estate, you've tried every lead gen source. Um, what is it about uh, the neighborhood, being the neighborhood mayor that's, you know, attracted you or like, tell us more about that. Like, how did it start? What's the, uh, and how, sure. how have you come to where you're at on it now? Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing, you know. You, we as leaders have to practice what we preach, and and we I really feel with all our new agents coming in and in my downline and on my team, it's you really encourage them to have three pillars of of lead sources. You know, it's not always the best agent that has the most success in real estate. It's usually the one I'm that's got the most. I'm going to take notes on these three pillars, by the way. So if anybody <laughs> else is listening, take notes because you're about to get some gold. All right. Yeah. So, like I said, it's not always the best. Uh, agent that's the best realtor has the most success. It's the one that has the most customers. 
Now, the longevity right. is you have to be very good in order to maintain that. But uh, why I why I say that is that we do need three pillars. We need the opportunities for, you know, we call it our Internet leads, but that's kind of it's a lot broader than that now. But that's your, you know, your your Zillow leads, your, uh, you know, if you have Boomtown, you know, Commission Zinc, Y Lopo, whatever that is, you know, opportunities that you're not out there, you're paying for a platform or your social media attracting. So that's one pillar. Our middle pillar, which is your fundamental and, and, and where you need to be is your is your sphere of influence. You know, and if you are new in the business, you know, what's your sphere of influence? Well, make a list of 200 people you would invite to your wedding. That's your sphere of influence. Start hitting them up. And there's techniques to, to, to do that as well. And then once you get into the business and you start growing your business, again, your repeat referral people fall into your sphere of influence. And then the third pillar is, OK, where do I go when I'm out of business? Where do I go? Uh, where, what? What's what system do I have to continue to put me in front of viable people that are looking to buy and sell? And there's a million things, not a million, but there's a lot of things out there that we can do as agents. And I think you have to really take a look at yourself and say, OK, what what do I like to do? You know, what are, what's your talent? Uh, what's your super your superhero talent? You know, what do you enjoy for a hobby? You know, and, and then try to align that third pillar with the things that you like doing, because then when you do them, it doesn't feel so much like work. For me, it was, uh, you know, waterfront homes. I'm a water rat. I love the lake. We've been on the lake forever. And it was real simple for me to align myself with a system that would be based around what I like to do. And that's to be on a boat or to be around people like that. And uh, we have other agents on our team. I have one, Jason, who's a rock star. Uh, you know, he really enjoys uh, the community aspect of, you know, see, so he's part of two boards in town, big brothers, big sisters, and he's got another one and he volunteers his time and he really enjoys that. And he helps kids. He helps, uh, so, you know, lots of organizations, you know, make deposits in their lives so that in return, when they think about real estate, it's like, oh, Jason, man, he, you know, he was at our board meeting yesterday and he had his Andrew Gadosh and Associates shirt on. I'm going to call him when I'm thinking about real estate. So he's aligned his, you know, third pillar with what he likes to do there. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do, and, and there's a million coaches out there that probably do a really good job of itemizing those. For me, what we like is our neighborhood mayor program, and that is an alignment with it's a really it's a documentation. You asked me how we got here. It's kind of a documentation of, of what and how we built our business in that tier or that pillar of our, our business. And what happened was I, um, I moved to a small little lake. Or I purchased a home in a small little lake community. Uh, about 20 minutes from where my market was waiting on my wife to graduate from college. She had a couple more years and we were planning on heading out and heading south. Now, this is still in Ohio. And uh, so bought a place there and immediately uh, in order, I, I knew nobody, I, you know, I wasn't originally from Ohio. I had no real connections in this, this area. And uh, so I immediately started, in, you know, kind of integrating with the community. Uh, I set up shop you know, wanted to learn the market. I started to volunteer for the uh, the social clubs in the homeowners association. You know, my pitch was, hey, what do you need? I can help you, uh, whether it be a financial contribution, which I didn't have really a lot of money at the time. Uh, it was time, effort, whatever. And then I also started socially kind of building this fabric in the community where it really didn't have a good social fabric in terms of there wasn't a lot of connectivity in the community. So we would put on events and it was a lot of, it was really small homegrown stuff. Even at my home at the time, we have a lake house there. So I was like, Hey, come on over to the lake. We'll sit on the dock, have some drinks, uh, or we'll, you know, do a progressive dinner around the water. There's a, a lot of things that we can talk about, which and we can, but the point there is that we started to grow this, what has now become the neighborhood mayor program. And in a nutshell, it's about bringing the community together, it's about strategically having uh, specific events, uh, hopefully one a quarter and or uh, one something that you can talk about once. We're up to about once a month now that we're doing something to bring the community together in some respect or to help sponsor an existing event. But the bottom line is staying in touch with everybody, bringing people together, putting on awesome events and really controlling the social media in those areas. And that's kind of in a nutshell, what the neighborhood mayor program is. Now we're putting together a actual course that, you know, it's not ready yet that, you know, if you guys want more information, we can certainly um, check that out. There's um, a Facebook group 
and it's um, the uh, it's neighborhood mayors uh, uh, private Facebook group on Facebook that kind of details some of it. But the point there is that if you if you guys could put together no matter what community you're in, whether it's a geographic location like I'm in or a demographic group, people from church or like, for example, Jason's um, you know group with his demographics of, at the uh, where he volunteers. If you have that group, then you can start to connect market to those people in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I do something in life in, a, in another lifetime. I was a, I was in the golf industry for 15 years and I was an instructor. And, um, you know, you say community, I kind of think of the word tribe, right? My right. tribe is golfers. And um, what I did is I started a golf league we meet once a month so i get to have my cake eat, eat it too right i get to go play golf with people that i like Perfect. and real estate just naturally comes up yeah that's great that is a good idea i love that idea uh, i've got it documented if you want the system i'll send it to you <laughs> okay good yeah that's the beauty of of uh you know this exp organization is that you know it's the collaboration is just taking people to the next level yeah totally so um you know if you could give people like I mean, you've dropped a lot of nuggets already, so this is a little redundant in the question, but if you could give people like three quick quick tips to be successful in starting their, uh, or being the neighborhood mayor, what would you say it would be? Yeah, so we kind of break it down. There's three different levels to it. There's the mayor candidate, and that's kind of geared for somebody that's going into a neighborhood that does not have a lot of market share or is new to the area. And um, those are the things, if you're a mayor candidate, that means, hey, you haven't you haven't got the position yet, but you're working hard to get it. You probably don't have a lot of political clout, clout and in this case, you don't have a lot of capital as it relates to marketing, uh, you know, as an analogy. And um, so you're doing a lot of things that don't cost a lot of money. Uh, the first thing I would do is I would create your database. I mean, it's fundamental that you have to have your database. You have to create your audience. Where does that audience come from? It's going to naturally grow as we talk about a few additional things here as we go forward. But you want to get as much data as you can. Either you buy the list, you uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to go about it uh, in a quick way. But at the end of the day, you got you have to have your list of who you're going to market to, and then you want to have your marketing media channel outlet. So I would encourage every one of you guys to go in and create a private neighborhood group in your neighborhood or in the area you want to sell. It does. And when I say neighborhood, it's interchangeable about a defining area. So, for example, we've got a couple of our agents that are in the, you know, uh, they've got commerce, like one of them's Commerce Park uh, neighborhood group. Well, Commerce Park is kind of a, a cross street and there's four or five neighborhoods that are right around there. But everybody knows where Congress Park is. So he coined that name. He then branded it. And then now he's using that to define that area. And so you have to define the area. You have to educate people on where that's at. You have to then enter uh, into some type of way to collect the data of those people. And then you want to create a private Facebook group so that now all of a sudden those people feel like they're part of a community. And guess what? You're kind of controlling that Facebook group. It's like a next door, but, you know, it's not really designed to promote a ton of other businesses. It is designed for you to promote um, connectivity positive things in the market, what's happening in the area. And if there's somebody that's a preferred vendor of yours and they want to get on there, yeah, you can set up an arrangement for them to market to those people. Um, we don't typically allow other agents in our private Facebook groups, um, you know, unless they're in alignment with, with us. Uh, but yeah, it's basically, it's an audience. So once you have the audience, now the problem is what do you, what kind of market, what kind of content do you give them? And if you're, starting out in the neighborhood, you don't have a lot of listings. So it's hard to say, hey, just listed or you know, just sold. Um, at that point is where you really have to leverage the, the events. Um, that's the main thing that we do. So for example, let's say that you're new to a neighborhood. You don't know many people. Uh, you don't have a lot of money. What's the first thing you're going to do? Uh, OK, well, let's get out. Let's collect um, names, get a list, and let's have a block party. And in that block party, you're going to tell everybody, hey, listen, I'm going to sponsor the meet. Um, or the, the hamburgers, the hot dogs, uh, I'll have the grill working, you know, who wants to volunteer to bring some sides, who wants to bring chips, who wants to bring the drinks, everybody bring your own um, alcohol, if you want to bring beers or wine or juice boxes or whatever for the kids, you know, so you don't have the liability, but let's get it out there. So it's not costing you a lot of money, go to your lender, go to your title company, see if you can help get some of that stuff zero based. 
And now all of a sudden you're throwing it out there. So now you have the content that you need um, for the promotion that's going to create the excitement for the community to promote it to their neighbors. And what we like to do is we like to do a combination of, uh, you know, postcard, like old school postcard or ha uh, door hangers, that kind of thing. You know, door hangers work really well when you're walking a neighborhood for the first time or you're trying to get your name out there. You're introducing yourself to people and it's cheap, it's inexpensive, but you want some type of print media to go to each house so that they know that there's more information on this private Facebook group. This is the URL, go check it out and it'll give you all the details. So you wanna give them a little cheese to attract the mice to go to the Facebook. Now all of a sudden they're coming on, they're wanting to join your group. So you're A, attracting more people to create a larger audience. B, you've got a event that you're using for the content to the promote, you know, basically it's the promotion, what you're promoting. And then once the event happens, you have all the content for the documentation for the Facebook lives, the thank yous, all that kind of stuff. So it's a big ecosystem that kind of goes round and round. And um, that's kind of how we have it set up. Once you gain market share and you start getting more than 10%, uh, we consider you in the 10% market share. So you're selling 10 out of every 100 houses in that neighborhood. You become a first term mayor. You're ramping up your marketing budget. You're doing some bigger and better things. And then uh, at the end, uh, the incumbent mayor is when you're blowing it out. You're doing things like huge fireworks displays. You're writing theme songs for the neighborhood. You're putting videos together that you know cost you quite a bit of money, but set you so much higher than the bar than anybody else would really want to jump in to do unless they're making a lot of money in that neighborhood. Man, my mind is just going crazy. I've got a bunch of notes over here. So if you've seen me looking, I'm writing down notes. Um, yeah. Two things that popped to my mind where I will be able to improve my, you know, it's called Portland Golfaholics um, is the group that I put together. One, I never had like an end of year barbecue. It's like, what am I thinking? Like right. now I'm going to make sure to have a beginning of the year and an end of year barbecue just to get sure. people out and have fun. Right. Um, or like watch parties for the big golf tournaments. Um, Another thing, and this kind of goes in line with where you were talking about, you know, if you have that block party, invite people out um, and it kind of in line with that. We have our so in Portland in the summer, it's beautiful. It's light till, you know, like 930. So we have our events after work. But in the winter, like it's 38 and raining. And, you know, I don't I know if you're a golfer, but that's not fun to golf in. But one of the guys who um, was a sponsor during the year, his company has a corporate membership to Top Golf. So what yes. we've done is we, in the winter months, we go to Top Golf and we get two bays and they're next to each other and his company covers that. And then what we do is we find a lender to be a beverage sponsor and then somebody else can be the food sponsor. So everybody who comes, they're, they are there for free. The Everybody, you know, gets to talk business or whatever they want to do or talk golf. So it's just, it's a lot of fun. And it's uh, the, the camaraderie that's built just is, is palpable. You can feel it being there. So that's oh, what I'm that. selfishly taking out of this. So, um, yeah. well, and but, think about yeah. it, think about it in the framework for what you're doing. Now you have to look at it and say, okay, okay. How do I leverage this for every opportunity leading up to each event? And how do I leverage each event for social media posts, for live Facebook groups, for testimonials, for all that kind of stuff. And um, when you really think about it that way, it really kind of helps uh, achieve the other things that you're trying to do in your in your business that are necessary now to keep up. Yeah, yeah. And just more opportunities to, to meet with more people and an excuse to reach out to people. So, um, man, my, my mind's running crazy. I'm going to try and stay stay with what we're trying to talk about. Um, so team leader now, right? Uh, big team leader, got a lot of stuff going on. What's What's one of the challenges that you have um, that you've been encountering either now or like before? How long ago did you make the switch over to EXP? It's been about three and a half years. Okay. And what are some of the challenges you experienced? Because you you owned a Remax. Is that right? I did. And what did you, what was, tell us a little bit, bit about that and maybe what prompted the change? Well, I think that, um, you know, it's an interesting uh, situation and journey because, you know, when I had the Remax, I realized I either had to be very, very big or I had to be boutique. And really, unfortunately, a lot of brokers now are not really making money that have just a few agents um, with them. And then, you know, they have to be big. That's why they're gobbling each other up and, 
it's kind of a, a rough market right now. So I was, I was really realized that the money was in the sales. I was making more, more income from the team and than I was from the actual franchise. So ended up selling that. And the story in the back of my head was, I don't want to be a broker anymore. I don't want to have to deal with all the things that brokers have to deal with the compliance issues, the, you know, cutting the checks, you know, all that kind of stuff that, that you have to do. Uh, so when I sold it to a Realogy brand and I had a non-compete for about five years, I was just an agent running my team and I enjoyed that. But at the same time, I realized that, to be honest with you, there wasn't really an opportunity for my agents to do anything other than be part of my team. Yeah, sure. I had ownership in the, in the business and I couldn't really sell them ownership in Andrew Gatos and Associates because quite frankly, it really wasn't worth that much. You know, right. when I left, it's gone. It's not going to let, you know, put them into a retirement situation. So Al Stasek and I, who are, you know, good friends, we we looked at this and said, okay, we need to create some type of opportunity for our, the, the people on my team. And many of you guys out there that are contemplating starting a team, uh, you don't know what you don't know yet, just like I didn't. I didn't know that, yeah, you can have the best team in the world, but eventually as those team members become successful and they start doing their own things, they're going to get wooed by every other brokerage in town. Everybody's going to have a better, you know, plan for them, a better opportunity, and it's tough to hold on to people unless it's a really solid foundational relationship. So what was happening is we recognized in the business that there was really not an opportunity for our agents to create wealth, passive income by working just for our team. So we had two options. Do we help them in the rental business get going, uh, which takes a lot and it's a lot of risk and it's a longer term? Um, or could we help them with like a real estate investment trust, which is what we've been involved with a few of those. Matter of fact, um, Larry Connor, the guy who's piloting uh, Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket to space next month is a really good friend of mine. And he runs, he did it all self-made uh, on, you know, multi-level marketing. He's got a real estate uh, investment firm. And um, what was pretty cool is we were going to purchase one of his funds and then allow our agents to buy into that almost like what EXP is doing, you know, taking 5% of their income, buying in at a discount. And we had it all set up. And then EXP came, came along and Al calls me and says, Andrew, you got to look at this. This checks all the boxes that we're looking for here. And so with that, um, why I talk about it is that what I see the emerging challenges in the business are how do we create an opportunity for agents that want to align with us? And that's really the biggest challenge that we see. And with EXP, it's a unique business platform that allows that to happen. So now we can all be in alignment with each other and create that uh, opportunity along with the equities and everything else that are that are in the program. So that, that's been probably one of the biggest ahas that I've seen with the changes of the business is that the platforms that are available to us now, uh, like this platform, was, was the decision why I said, instead of going from the Realogy brand that was stale, and looking to go back independent and creating real estate trust with my realtors on my team, I could now put that on steroids, still do that, but at the same time, really help them have an opportunity where they don't need to go anywhere ever because it's just too good to stay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, it's funny. You bring up Al. We had him on the show and it was great. And he brought up Elon Musk too. And since I had Al on the show, I've thought about this a lot. Um, he said that, um, Elon asks himself when he has a great idea, what could I be missing? And then asks a bunch of different people, like, what could he be missing? And, um, you know, if I have an idea, it's brilliant because it's my idea, right? That's the blessing and a curse. But now I think about that all the time and it it's completely opened me up to being like, okay, what am I missing? Um, so that's right. really, it's fascinating stuff and kind of makes you look at things differently. Um, and, you know, one thing that you've brought up a couple times about this is the collaboration in and of itself within like the honey badger nation and the ex and exp in that you know we're really here to to help each other grow so um you know like tell you've got a little more experience with with al and like that sort of thing tell like when i was at exp con um you know al had coach bird um in and like we could just go see his coach talk and that was the people in that room it was incredible. I recognized some huge producers. I don't know if I saw you in there, but you know, just the collaboration that's amongst not just the honey badgers, but EXP is unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and I was there. It was a it was a great session. I mean, anytime you get a chance to spend time with Coach Burt, you know, you, you got to move mountains to get there. I, you know, I really feel like 
the collaboration was the most undervalued piece of my decision to move to eXp. I was looking at it, quite frankly, for my agents. Uh, I really wanted them to have the opportunity. I, I was kind of a little selfish in that I could, I kind of looked at eXp as like, hey, I could be the broker without being the broker. And, and quite frankly, it's the truth. You can run, uh, you know, build an organization and do the things you want to do, but you don't have to take care of all the back end stuff that's not not important and all the liability. Um, so that was why we made the move. But yet the biggest aha was the collaboration. I mean, it, it's a game changer. Like, I'm not kidding. Or, I mean, this is a big, big deal when you're you're a golfer. You know, if you're going to try to be a better golfer, who do you choose to play with? You don't play with people that are equal to your talent or less. You, you find better golfers and you get sucked up to the competition. That's what happened to me with when I joined NAEA. That's uh, Al and Jay's uh, company back in the day when we were all 30 under 30s. We, you know, Jay split off, started this training company. Uh, when I joined them and I sat in the room with 30 of the top agents in the world, it, it didn't take long for my business to double. And it, it wasn't like it was that much effort. It was just I was making right decisions. And I think for you and everybody else that's looking to, you know, be part of a community who why wouldn't you want to be with? people that want to collaborate. Now, the difference and the fundamental difference between this and a traditional office is that when you go into a traditional office, yeah, the manager wants to help you, the owner wants to help you. Um, typically, the manager has not a lot of real world experiences, or if they are, they're, they're kind of dated. Um, and then everybody in that office is your competition. They may be your best friend, but you guys are all trying to get the same piece of the pie. And yeah, they're going to help you, but they're not going to give you the secret sauce because there's nothing in it for them other than being nice and being a friend with exp everybody's in alignment you know it's the better you do chase the better exp does the better that i am because the stock that i own in exp is significant from working here for three years so it just helps 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 if i was in your downline you know you'd move mountains to do whatever you could to kind of make sure that i succeed and everybody else below me no doubt and that's really the difference is that you have access to everybody in the world that's part of this um, and they're happy to help you because they know we're all financially rewarded for that. I, that is something I've, I've come to learn intimately, so to speak, you know, reaching up and down, you know, we can yes. find people who are willing to help. So, uh, Andrew, if someone was looking to buy or sell in your area, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, you could just go to Andrew uh, dot work. I mean, that's, um, one of the easiest ways, or you can email me or just, just Google Andrew Gadosh, um, in Dayton, Ohio will pop up and uh, yeah, or hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, you know, TikTok. We're on all of them. We're, um, you know, some old guy here trying to be on TikTok, but I've enjoyed it. Yeah, man, I love it. We, we've had some fun with it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's all good. And I'm happy to help anybody and everybody. I think, you know, one of our core values on our team is make deposits in people's lives. You know, together, we're all better together. And um you know, I, you know, you put enough stuff out there and you help enough people get what they want. You'll get what you want in return. Yeah. Zig Ziglar all the way, baby. Well, yep. Hey, uh, I really appreciate your time. If, if you are, you know, anybody who's looking to buy or sell in Portland, Oregon or Vancouver, Washington, I'm here to help. Uh, happy to do so. You can contact me, uh, at chase at Mr. House hack or my website's running across the bottom at chase So, uh, Andrew really appreciate your time. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. And if you have any questions for either of us, we're happy to help. So, all right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day and have a great weekend. See you, Chase.